service of Bible Way Church of God's Word. Praise God. We thank God for all of us listening this morning. We thank God for his many blessings and thank him for all things today. God has been good to us, hasn't he? He has blessed us and we thank him for his favor and his he has placed upon us, and I thank God for his love, his love, his great love, his great love, his great mercy. Praise God, I, I can't stop praising him enough. I can't stop giving him the glory for all that he continues to do for me each and every day, how he watches over us and how he protects us. And so, my friends, we have a lot to be thankful for this morning, regardless of what's happening, regardless of what's going on around us. Praise God. Don't. I said before, don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. The enemy would love for you to get distracted. He'd love for us to get distracted and get our eyes, get our focus off of God. Stop looking at him. Stop looking at what's happening. Praise God. You got to understand that God is still in control. God is still in control. Regardless of what's happening, God is still in control. And he's able to keep that which we commit. God is able to continue to strengthen us regardless of what's happening. Regardless of the pain, regardless of the sickness, regardless of uh, of things that may come up on your home. Praise the Lord. God is able to keep you. So we have to continue to look unto him. Got to keep focused on him. I'm going to say this until I leave here. We got to stay focused on him. Because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. All things are in his hands. And I'm saying we have to keep telling this. I have to tell myself this too. And stay encouraged that all things are before him. And he knows all things. Just reading a little scripture this morning from uh, Psalms 34. And Psalms 34 says in the 17th verse, it says, The righteous cry and the Lord hear <clears throat> and deliver them out of all their troubles. The righteous, what? They cry unto the Lord, and the Lord delivered them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near, is nigh unto them that have a broken heart and save such as be of a contrite spirit. He says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. The Lord does what he delivers. God is a deliverer today. And we thank God. Thank God for his great salvation. Thank God for his great power. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you this morning. Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, as you continue to touch us and you continue to bless us. Father, our hearts, our minds right now are on you. They're on your glory, they're on your power, they're on your might. But you say that you hear our cries, you hear our prayers. The prayer of the righteous veil of much. Father, we come before your presence right now as your people, as your body. We come before you and we just ask that you strengthen us. Continue us to con- give us what we need to continue to run the race, to fight the fight, Lord God. To stand in these last days, Father looking unto you. Oh, Father, we just pray right now, Lord God, that you save. We pray right now that you touch, Lord God. Oh, Father, for you see the pain. You see the trouble that's up on our world right now. And there's one thing I know that you love mankind. You show that love by giving up your son. We thank you today, Lord God, for we believe that men are going to come unto you We believe that even through the midst of of the situations that you will open up eyes and hearts, Lord God. Oh, Father, we ask right now that you use us. Use us as your servants. Use us as your people. Use us, Lord God. For we've been called and born at a time such as this. Father, I praise you today. I praise you right now. Right now, this moment, I praise you for your peace. For your peace, Lord God. Hallelujah. Your peace that passes all understanding. I thank you for it this morning. I thank you for it being a weapon of our warfare that's mighty and powerful and that's able to pull down strongholds. 
praise God, as the enemy tries to bring the stronghold of worry and stress, Lord God, your peace. He said, if we keep our minds stayed on you, who you are, what you are, what you're able to do, you'll keep us in perfect peace, Lord. Let us all today, right now, this moment, get our minds on you. The one that's able to give us that perfect peace. The one that's able to help us, Lord God, in the strength of We pray right now, Lord God, before your face, before your face, we pray. Touch us, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. We give God the glory today. Thank you for all things. Hallelujah. To be blessed. To be blessed. And we thank God for being called today. We thank God for the Bible says for being his called and being his elect. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> we got to thank God for that today. And you know what? We got to we got to be, be those that are continue to stand focused on all that God is. All that God is. We ought to go forth and to Stand in this time, praise the Lord, as his elect. First Peter 1 and 10 says that we are the elect of God and sells us to make our calling election sure. That election refers to God's sovereign, e eternal choice of an individual. That's God's solemn, eternal choice. He, he elected us. He chose us. The Bible says he chose us before the foundation of the world. Well, the foundation of the world, God chose you. God knew who you were going to be. God already had, had, had chosen you to be born at a time such as this. It just, you just didn't happen. You're not a mistake this morning. God chose us for a reason, purpose. So that, that elect refers to God's sovereign, eternal choice of an individual to belong to him. He's chosen us to what? To belong to him. Oh, we thank God this morning. That, that's powerful right there. That should cause us to rejoice. It should cause us to be thankful. Lord, I praise you for you choosing me. For you picking me out of, out, of all the, all, out of all those things and all everybody around. Praise God. The things that, that I went forth and did in my life. But you love me so much. So we, we got to continue to thank God. He told his disciples, you have not chosen me. He said, I have chosen you. He said, I've chosen you. He tell, told me in John, St. John 15 and 16, he said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. He said, and ordained you that you should go, go forth, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things, I, these things I command you, that you love one another. He said, you have not chosen me, but I what? I have chosen you. And he chose them for what? For a purpose. He chose them for a purpose. It's like we've been chosen. We've been chosen for this purpose, that, that we are to manifest the fruit of God. We are manifest the fruit of God. We are to go forth and manifest this fruit in this world that we live in, in the times of darkness. Praise God. We, we, we have to be that light. So we've been called. God has called us out of darkness, the Bible says. God has called us out of darkness into a glorious, into a marvelous light. They call refers to his action in time. The action in time that God chose us out of darkness, chose us out of chaos. Didn't he? Think about it. How our lives were full of chaos. And lives are full of confusion. And God called you. God called me. And he tells us, praise the Lord, that I want you to be, be, be my servants in the earth. That's why we have to stay committed. That's why we need, that's why I said before, God needs foundational people. People that are building themselves up and standing on the things of God. That are going forth with his glory. You know, not allowing the enemy and the flesh to move them from their from the mindset of the glory that God has has added to their lives. He tells them in First Peter two and nine. He said, "But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, which means special, that you should show forth the praises." That's what I want to get. That we should show forth what God's praises, God's glory. 
Show forth who he is in the earth. Isn't that right? He said, show forth his praise of him who has called, that's the word again, called you what? Called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He said, because we were not his people, but now we've been called and chosen to be his people. Praise the Lord. Elect. Elect of God. I, I said before, this election, this, this choice took, took place before the foundation of the world. He's called us out to walk and to live for him. And we have to continue to walk in this. And listen, we have to be those, praise God, that are committed. Committed to the call. Committed to the things that God has called to. I've been talking about, remember, I've been talking about good service and how we invite to be those true servants, praise God. Being uh, those get good stewards of God. Good stewards of God. We will be the stewards of God that are caring for his word and be and, and are sincerely uh, doing what God has called us to do. We over because God has left us his work. God has put us over the things, praise the Lord, of his glory that we can manifest the glory in the time like this. So we have to walk worthy and walk, walk according to the assignment that God has given us. That's why we have to value our commitment. You got to value your commitment. You got to value your commitment. You got to be that steward. I said before, a steward is a person who manages another's uh, property. One who administrates anything as an agent of another. An appointed person, that, that's a steward. And, and, a, and a good steward wants and moves by godly knowledge. Listen, a good steward, a steward of God, he moves by godly knowledge. He moves by godly wisdom. Praise God. And he's got to be trustworthy and faithful. That's why we, we said the scripture in first, first Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. It, we got to be, we got to be people that are faithful, people that are trustworthy. That's who God is called. That's who God wants. People that's going to be that he can trust to go forth with his will, to go forth and uphold his name. And that's why I said a few minutes ago, praise God, that we must value our commitment. Got to value your commitment. And we can't allow the things around us to uh, cause us to be distracted from what God has called you to do. There is no greater thing, no greater thing than what, what, what God has called us to do right now. To walk worthy of him, to be steadfast, to manifest his glory in earth. We went over the scripture last time in Colossians 1 and 9, and it says to us, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, Paul is speaking, and, and do not cease to uh, pray for you, to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in wisdom and spiritual understanding. When you get a chance to study that, understand what that, what that means. He said, be filled with, the, with, the, with, with his understanding, being filled with his knowledge, being filled with his will. These are truly the blessings of God. Spiritual wisdom, spiritual knowledge, spiritual understanding. Because that's what we need. That's what we need in the times that we live in. This is what Jesus came with. Jesus, listen, Jesus came. Jesus brought us a ministry of revelation. Jesus came that the, that the blind might see. Do you understand what I'm saying? He came to open up the eyes of the blind and we could see it. Because we were all living in darkness. We were all living in darkness. But he came to open up our eyes and we might see. We might see his glory. He came that we might receive, receive dominion that, was, that Adam and Eve lost in the garden. God came. Jesus came to give us back dominion. To show man, you, I'm a, I can give you back dominion and power and glory. And you can ask things in my name. And things will happen. You can move mountains by your faith. So he says, he said, we said here that Jesus brought us a ministry of revelation. That we might be able to see. But understand something. We can't see God. We can't understand God without this spiritual wisdom and understanding. Because he goes on to say that uh, we're getting the wisdom and knowledge and understanding his will. He says that ye might walk worthy. This is, listen, I said before, you can do all the things in the church and you can learn the Christian vocabulary 
and you can learn to dance and you can learn to shout. A lot of people learn to dance and shout by watching other people. You can learn all these things. And there's nothing wrong with, with, with praise and worship and things of this nature. But the thing is that we don't want to just be able to do those things and not walk worthy. Through the years, I've seen people be able to do all those things but not walk worthy of his will. Not walk worthy of his glory. And that's what he says. You might walk worthy of the Lord. He says, and unto all pleasing, my life must be pleasing unto God. We should want to walk, live a life that, 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 that pleases God. That pleases God. We live, in, we, we, we live in a selfish world. And basically people are concern, uh, concerned with pleasing themselves. Pleasing themselves. Making sure they're happy. They don't care. They may want to be happy at all, at all costs. It doesn't matter what I do to you or whatever. I just want to be happy. He said, but we got to have a mind as people of God. These people that have been changed, regenerated. Hmm? Changed and regenerated by the power of the spirit. We, we want to walk worthy of the things of God and please God. And being the same thing that was said to disciples about being, about being uh, fruitful. We just read in St. John 15. We want to be fruitful. He said, and being fruitful. Uh, I wish you take time and you get a chance and look up these words and, 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 and allow God to put this in your spirit, in your heart. Just really do a word study on these things, being pleasing God, walking worthy, first of all, and then pleasing God. And, and being fruitful and, and doing good works. Because he said he's called us unto good works. In Ephesians 2 and 10. He said what he had ordained for man in the beginning, that man should manifest, man should do good things. Adam was created and Adam was placed in a holy, a holy garden. I say it was holy because it was made by God. He had placed him in a holy place. He gave him, he gave him everything. Gave Adam and Eve everything that they needed. And, and, and he, he, was, he was in dominion. Both of them were. And all they had to do was continue to please God. Do the things that God had required of them. Even when the enemy came, they had the power and authority to rebuke him. But didn't. Man lost dominion. God has come through Jesus Christ to give us back dominion. Now, so we're able now to walk worthy. I'm able now to stand in the power of God. I'm able to bring forth good works. I got a mind now because I, I want, listen, me, myself personally, I want to increase in the knowledge of God, just like the scripture says. I want to increase in the knowledge of God. It doesn't matter because they, they call me pastor or whatever they, they make title you have. That doesn't, that doesn't just give you knowledge. That just doesn't give you wisdom. That just doesn't give you spiritual understanding. It doesn't really come by much, much reading. It comes through prayer. It comes through fasting. It comes from a desire. Look at Daniel. Oh, what we read here, Daniel didn't have all this. Daniel was, 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 was in bondage to a heathen king and a heathen nation. But he continued to pray. He continued to fast. He continued to trust God. We 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 now churches right churches today still do the that what we call the Daniel fast fast in twenty one days. We call it sometimes the Daniel fast. And what did God do? God gave him revelation, gave him knowledge, showed him things. Praise the Lord that had, that were to come to pass. Because Daniel was seeking God for wisdom. He was seeking God for knowledge. He wanted God to show him what his will was. He wasn't praying for deliver me away from this king and deliver me from. He was praying to God, show him, give me your wisdom, give me your knowledge. So he didn't allow his circumstance. He didn't allow his situation to change his praise, to change his prayer, to change his worship. Remember, he got in trouble because he was because he was praying. He got in trouble for praying. He got thrown in the lion's den for praying. For praying to God because when they tried to stop him, he kept praying. 
because he knew where his salvation was. He trusted in the power and the might of God. So you got to understand the scripture I read earlier, God is near unto you. God hears your cries. God hears your cries and God wants you to know him and the power of his might. Man, he wants us to know him. He wants us to know him. Not to know him, it takes, it takes crucifying this flesh, the carnal nature, the old man. It takes that. If you're going to grow and move in the power of God, it takes that. You got to be willing. You got to be willing to do just what Paul says crucify the will and the desire of your flesh. You got to be willing to do that. If you want to grow in God, you got to be willing to crucify the will and desire of your flesh. Look what he says in Galatians 2 and 20. Listen, I'm telling you some things this morning that will help us all grow. And we got to, we can't say, I've heard this so much. No, it's, it's got to be in your spirit because hearing is not enough. It got to be in your spirit. And when it gets into your spirit, when it gets into your heart, when it gets into the very essence of your mind, you could become a doer. I don't want to become a doer. I don't want to be a scripture quoter and, and somebody that's just going to church and Bible study and, and know this and say I'm a this and that. I want this in my spirit, in my heart, in my mind, that I walk in it, I live in it. I am. I am what he wants me to be. Paul said, I live and I move in him. I live and move and have my being. In him, I live. In him, I move. In him, I have my being. Hallelujah. That's powerful. But he says to us here, he says, I am crucified with Christ, Galatians 2 and 20. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Listen, for us to be those, be the call and elect of God, Crucifixion is necessary. Destroying the old thinking, the old nature. Because in Romans 7, it says, in my flesh dwell no good thing. I don't care how much you want to educate yourself. I don't care how much you want to put on, you can put on nice clothes and you can wear the best of, of the best. Name brand, pay, pay thousands of dollars for this outfit. It still does not change the heart. It still does not change the character. It still doesn't give you integrity in God. People might look at you a certain way. And people may praise you and people may glorify you. And people may say you're this and that. But. God looks at your heart. And the Bible says to us in Jeremiah 7, it said the heart is deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Excuse me, Jeremiah 9. It says the heart is deceitful of all things and, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know it? We think we know folks and find out we didn't. We thought we thought they were this way and that way, and we found out they weren't. Who can know the heart? Because the heart is deceitful. The heart is desperately wicked, but see, but God tries, the Bible said God tries the reins of the heart, the mind of the heart. God tries, God tests the mind of the heart. The reign means mind, it's just the mind of the heart. That's why Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, this is what he says. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, nevertheless, in spite of, even though I'm crucified, I'm alive. I've never lived better. Hallelujah. He said, yet not I, but now what's happening? It ain't me. Because I've crucified, I'm crucifying me. And just because you've been in the Lord a, 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 a while, that don't mean that you stop. That don't mean that you got it. I'm there now. I made it. I got time. Seniority means nothing to the enemy. Seniority means nothing to the flesh. 
Look what he says. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. What's living in you? Is Christ living in you? Is he hid in you? Is his word hid in your heart? Have you, have you uh, uh, confirmed your, your, your calling? Have you, are you walking in it? Are you doing what, what does say the Lord? You got the value. Your commitment. A good steward, I said before, wants and moved by godly knowledge. He, he moves by the knowledge of God. He prays and asks God, what do I go now? He asks God, what, what is your will? When David left, 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 when they came and took David's stuff in Ziglag, David prayed and asked God, what should I do? Which way should I go? What is your desire? Should I, should I pursue? Should I overtake? What, what do you want me to do? Because we can get thrown in those, those times and those moments when we don't know what to do. That's why you, you got to trust God. That's why a good steward said, I'm going to trust my Lord. I'm going to trust my Lord. Because I believe that God hears me. The Bible says he hears the prayers of the righteous. Effectual fervent prayer. God hears that effectual fervent prayer. He hears the prayer of the righteous, those that love him. See, God has a covenant with the righteous. Read your word. God has a covenant with the righteous. He hears their prayers. We just read in Psalms 34. He hears them. He knows them. And he will keep his people Regardless of what they're going through. Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good. To those that love God. And that are what? That are called according to his purpose. All things work together for good. All things, God uses us. They, their purpose, their purpose that, in, in, that, in, that, in that when Paul was uh, wrote this in Rome, they were going through great suffering and persecution. But his glory was still being manifest. Even though they were being uh, uh, brought down and, and, and torn asunder and, and set on fire, and they were, they were the sport of that time in the arena, the glory of God was still being manifested. That's why Paul said, what's going to separate us from the love of God, man? See, to see, honestly be a good steward, you got to love God. You got, listen, you got to really love God. For you to be faithful, I said a steward is faithful and trustworthy. You got to love God. To really make your call and election sure, it comes from you really being in love with God. Really being love, being in love with God. And it's just like the wedding vow, you go through better and worse. Sickness and health, to death do your part. You, you're there, you're there. Paul and others were there. They stayed, they trusted God. They kept the faith. He says, so Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet, not I, but Christ liveth in me and the life the life hallelujah which I now live in this body in this flesh I live by faith I this is the key I live this life now and I live it trusting God I live it believing God I live it walking and looking and trusting in the integrity of God that's this life that's how I have to live it trusting in God Holding on to what he has said. That's why David said, I got to put your word in my heart. Because the, the interest of your word brings light. It gives me understanding. You got to, I said before, you got to love this. You're not going to stay with it if you don't love it. You're not going to endure temptation. You're, gonna, you're not going to endure trouble if you don't love it. 
If you don't love this word, if you don't love God, you got to love this. And so Paul says, this life I now live, I live in the flesh. He said, I live in the flesh. I live by faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He said he loved me and he gave himself for me. God is near those that love him. The call, listen to me, the call and the elect of God are going to be those that love God. They're not going to change like, like the weather. They're not going to let storms move them, trouble move them. They're going to keep looking at him. They're going to keep saying to God, what do you want? True believers, true believers are always watching. True believers are always waiting. True believers, hallelujah, are always working. True believers are, are, wait, are watching and waiting and working. Always. Hallelujah. We give him the glory this morning. For God is good. Even in the midst of this trouble. Even in the midst of this sickness. Even the afflictions that, that has come upon us. God is able to keep that which you commit. I love him. I love him this morning. Because he's a keeper. He is a keeper. And I'm going to keep praising him. I'm going to keep giving him the glory. We thank God for keeping us in a time such as this. People of God, let's keep worshiping God. Thank God for you. Guys, praying for me and my wife. Praise the Lord as, as we go through this, uh, this coronavirus. God is keeping us. And I thank God for it. Thank God for his strength. He's a mighty God. He's a powerful God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for watching over us, Lord God. Hallelujah. Our faith, our trust is in you. We hold on to all that you are. Continue to touch your people. Continue to bless us that we can continue to fall in love with you more and more. That's what's going to keep us. That's what's going to strengthen us. Let us make our calling election sure by loving you like you want to be loved, Lord. And say and touch and heal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. God bless. Love you. Love you. Stay with God.